So we are starting the regular TTP pass colloquium. It's my pleasure to uh, introduce Konrad Schlickholt from uh, International Center for Theory of Quantum Technologies and University of Gdańsk. Uh, he is working as far as I understand with Lukasz Ludnicki. Uh, Lukasz, okay. your PhD. Uh, my PhD is supervisor. No, he is Lukowski, and he's I like the addition. So we work together as a Okay, okay, okay. So, so your main advisor is, is Marek. Yes. Very good. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, today we will hear uh, we'll hear a talk about the uh, entanglement of bosonic fields and its uh, evolution, its open evolution. Uh, Conrad, the ground is yours. It's usually 45. Okay, I, I hope I will manage to do this on time. So, uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Konrad Schlichtels. Uh, as it was mentioned, I'm a PhD student in uh, ICQT, and I will tell you uh, some uh, things about my recent preference about uh, mesoscopic description of entanglement of bosonic fields. So, like general motivation for uh, why we, we want to uh, consider mesoscopic uh, systems, what does it mean? So we start to consider more and more complex involved systems and it uh, becomes unfeasible or cumbersome to uh, make a full quantum description and calculation for such systems. And for example, in the context of quantum information, we are interested in uh, making higher scale systems mm -hmm. like quantum computers, uh, but still we want to maintain that the, the non-classical features of the, the system and to not, we would like to be able still to tell theoretically something about such systems. And so uh, in particular for, for quantum information, we are interested in entanglement. And one of the uh, possible avenues uh, are using just bosonic systems. And uh, some time ago, uh, recently, uh, the, uh, there was uh, one uh, such mesoscopic description. So um, description which tries to capture the most relevant uh, degrees of freedom of the system, but uh, by uh, but still reducing the complexity of the whole problem. So there was uh, one such uh, description proposed by Professor Alitsky, uh, and this was the reduced state of the field uh, formalist. And the main idea there, uh, for short, I will call it RSA, F, uh, so that normally you construct the, fo fo uh, from the, for example, when we have single particle Hilbert space uh, with n levels, uh, for this uh, particle, uh, we uh, construct in finite dimensional Fox space. And the main idea is like to reduce uh, the description of the Fox space back to single particle like Hilbert space. It's pretty much the same Hilbert space, but uh, uh, we, uh, of course, by uh, choosing only uh, some degrees of freedom, we, we don't describe the whole state of the Fox space. So uh, he proposed uh, in his work this reduction that we have this reduced state on single uh, and uh, new field. So it captures here uh, average uh, average occupation of modes. Uh, here is the uh, whole state of the field, and here is the reduced one. Uh, and the coherences between them, and the here is called uh, the mean field that captures uh, local shapes. And uh, it allows also to reduce additive observables of this type uh, in very simple way. And this reduction uh, presents the expectation values. Uh, so if we have expectation value of this operator, on original state, and for the reduce counterpart is exactly equal. Uh, yes. Can I, can I have a quick, quick question? Yes. So what are these days, K? Ah, yeah. So it's just uh, uh, we choose uh, like a basis in the single particle, like uh, Hilbert space, uh, 
it doesn't correspond. Uh, it's uh, those typically correspond to different modes uh, of the field we have. So, uh, so do the original really? Uh, they correspond to original basis in the single particle. Uh, uh, the Hilbert space also, in some sense. Collective modes. Sorry. Collective modes. No, no, those are just some modes. We don't specify what are those modes. Those are uh, modes of the uh, of bosonic fields. You mean, for instance, spin states of the boson or something? Uh, no, it's just uh, uh, arbitrary mode. Translational motion is not confined to a finite sub subspace. It's it's really a spin variable that could be only uh, you know have finite number. Of yeah, variables. we have uh, it's a. This, of course, uh, apply only when our system can be uh, mm. as uh, when we can choose only a uh, uh, finite number of modes that we are interested in. Yes, but that is best if it fits to some you know, realities. Y yes, so, so there could be like uh, uh, this is just some. Okay, you could have just uh, cavity and modes in the cavity. It's the, the so simple example. Bosons or massive particles? No, it's for, it's for bosons. So it's mainly we consider photons. Uh, okay. Uh, That's another story. Uh, okay, so we are here with bosons. So a photo. Let's uh, tell that those are photons. Uh, and uh, uh, then it's interesting to see how the evolution in this uh, new Hilbert space looks like. And uh, uh, there was this uh, uh, GKLS master equation considered the specific class of those equations. So here we have evolution with the simple Hamiltonian, which we have on the linear copy. Uh, here is a term that corresponds uh, to the uh, coherent clamping. Uh, this uh, term corresponds to unita random unitary scattering. That's so we can have some scattering processes. And here we have uh, uh, annihilation and creation uh, terms that uh, comes from the uh, coupling with environment. So uh, environment can take our particles away or pump some in. And it turns out that uh, we can. Uh, obtain the evolution equations uh, uh, which are contained in this reduced uh, description. So within this uh, uh, single particle like filter space, so we have uh, two reduced state, states for which uh, uh, we write the equations and uh, uh, we see that uh, if we remove the coherent, this term is here function, we remove that, it, then those are uh, decoupled. And we have also here, like, uh, typical unitary evolution, uh, like Heisenberg equation. Here is a reduced Hamiltonian with this reduction uh, procedure for operators. Uh, and so <laughs> this description can capture some class of uh, systems and uh, uh, greatly reduce the complexity of the problem to just find an dimensional uh, uh, mixed states, it, it, like mixed states of finite dimensional. Uh, and then, uh, but uh, uh, what we are interested, in, and especially I was interested, is to uh, still we want to capture quantum phenomena. I was interested. Uh, in entanglement. And uh, it turns out there was uh, work of uh, Tomasz Linowski and Łukasz Rudnicki that uh, this description lacks information about entanglement. So uh, from the context of quantum information, it was a uh, major caveat to not have uh, this notion in this description. And so, uh, what are the degrees of freedom uh, uh, which are relevant for entanglement that we would like to capture? So consider the simple uh, uh, singlet state uh, encoded in photonic modes. So we have uh, one particle per particle. Here is the partition, this uh, semicolon. And uh, uh, this uh, 
of how this uh, well known uh, state. And uh, when we uh, look into observables on this, those qubits effectively, because we, uh, those are qubits when we, uh, uh, we uh, consider only the subsets of having single photo per part, and then observe uh, Pauli matrices, uh, which acts on those qubits are effectively uh, stops operators. So they are uh, uh, differences of uh, number of photons in two orthogonal modes, and I uh, corresponds to one of the three mutually unbiased bases. And uh, so pretty much any entanglement that uh, one would consider on this uh, two qubit state would be uh, based on observables would, uh, which would be written as a tensor product of those Pauli matrices. So it would be uh, just uh, a product of the Stokes operators. And uh, so we see that it is somehow related uh, to the correlations in photon numbers. So this is our first clue we have. And uh, another clue that, that we can have is that uh, in uh, classical uh, electrodynamics, when we describe polarization, we consider Stokes parameters and they describe the uh, polarization. But when uh, we go to, uh, to describe in photons, those uh, promoted uh, to the operator's uh, Stokes parameters, um, can only describe a single photon, the polarization of a single photon. Um, but if we have two photons, then we have to consider uh, high, can consider higher order polarization tensors. Uh, and as uh, they are written here, and so we see that they are again some, uh, some products of uh, uh, stops operators where, so we again have like correlations uh, in uh, uh, in particle numbers, and so uh, we know that some non-classicality is uh, expected in ha having those uh, such types of correlations. And to, when we are talking of both photons, we can tell that the state is uh, unpolarized to k order if uh, just we have expectation values where zero for the uh, up to the uh, 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 order of the polarization tensors we consider, but we can have uh, polar uh, uh, polarization in some higher orders, so which is uh, which we do not consider in classical uh, consideration. So, what is our main idea? It's just uh, to make another uh, reduction of the Fox space, but now uh, we consider a reduction where we take a, a tensor product of two such uh, uh, single particle like filter spaces and we introduce this operator on this space uh, and then we uh, so here it captures those uh, 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 correlations in photon numbers uh, and uh, it is built in analogy uh, to the reduced state in the original RSF uh, and, uh, but here it's still not really a state uh, because it's here, this has a proper uh, uh, properties of the state. This still does not have those properties, but uh, we did not choose the uh, bipartition uh, for the uh, entanglement. We, when we consider entanglement, we have to have some partition of the system. Uh, and so uh, we want to one of the spaces to uh, describe one of the subsystems, and the second uh, 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 space will describe second subsystems. Uh, so uh, we make a, a choose some indices of modes. So uh, which modes will correspond to the one of the subsystems, and which modes will correspond to the another subsystem, uh, and then we project this uh, extended. Uh, what we call the extended reduced state, we project it uh, to, to this uh, using um, uh, we, we project it uh, using this bipartition. So we project that we consider here only uh, leave the modes for the 
first uh, subsystem, uh, and uh, here we leave only modes uh, which are uh, corresponding to the second subsystem. And in fact, this uh, operator then is uh, well defined the density matrix on this uh, uh, two particle like uh, 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 space. Okay, so this it, does it help us? Okay, so in fact, yes. Uh, and here, um, uh, based, uh, inspired by the one of the works of my supervisor, Professor Krukowski, where he mapped uh, entanglement witnesses uh, using uh, for polymatrices to the Stokes operators, uh, uh, we can show that uh, if the uh, state of the field is separable, then the, this projected state, this uh, two particular state is separable. So the, there should be R only in, in one direction. It doesn't go into the two directions, yes? Then how do we define separability of the state of the field? Yes, so uh, we define the separability of, uh, we consider mode and entanglement. So state can be written uh, for the pure states. It will be if the state can be written uh, as a uh, product of uh, uh, polynomials of creation operators uh, in the modes of one party uh, products modes of the second party on the vacuum. And then uh, for density matrices is based on, uh, on this, it follows. But is this statement true for, like, for any projection that you have there? It's like for a, like yes, yes. It's, it's this, if this state is separable in the this bipartition we consider, then this will be always separable. Of course, we can choose uh, having this uh, this operator here. We can choose different bipartitions, uh, so, and so so if this is separable, the, okay, we know if this is separable, then this is separable. So if this is entangled, then the original state has to also be entangled. So yes, we have a sufficient criterion to. Uh, uh, the, to see entanglement of the original state only based on this uh, reduced state. Uh, and here are some smaller remarks. So uh, we have two particles uh, and they need to have at least two uh, levels to you know, be able uh, uh, that would allow us to talk about entanglement. So we have to have at least four modes to co for considerations. And there are some situations when then this state is not proper state, it's not normalizable. Uh, in particular, when the state is like it's some superposition of vacuum, and here's some polynomial of creation operators in one subsystem uh, on the vacuum, and polynomial of creation operators on second subsystem on vacuum. So the, those are specific states when uh, this is not. Uh, well defined as city matrix, but we can overcome some of these problems. Uh, but uh, that will uh, I will talk about this later. But now we want to see if we still are able to uh, have closed evolution inside the, our description. And yes, we uh, considering the same uh, class of uh, uh, master equations. Only removing this uh, uh, coherent pumping term, uh, then we have this. Uh, we derive analogously the um, um, uh, evolution equation for our reduced state. Uh, and uh, if uh, the evolution does not couple uh, modes between the parties, uh, then we can use this uh, projected state. Oh. Uh, the thing is that uh, we need to consider the original reduced state on the single particle, such uh, sim single particle like state, uh, space, because here it couples with the original reduction of the state. Uh, so we have two equations that have to be considered together. Uh, okay, so we uh, we have this uh, evolution in our description. Uh, we also can uh, reduce observables now of the fourth order, and it also preserves the expectation values. 
Uh, and a small comment, if one wants this coherent pumping directly in the evolution equation, then we have to add some additional structures for considerations. Uh, but otherwise, it is, uh, they are uh, not necessary. And uh, so we have, we see that we have some uh, generalization of this uh, uh, original uh, reduced state of the field approach. And now to, let's go to some simple examples of application. Uh, so we want to see if we really find an entanglement uh, with it or it's just uh, uh, useless criteria. So we consider this, of first, this uh, single photon state is very simple. Uh, so it's single photon which was beam splitted uh, uh, by symmetric beam splitter. And uh, while it's very simple, it's very peculiar for our description because firstly, it has two modes. And I told that we have to have four modes. So uh, when uh, we have two modes, we can put extend to uh, trivially to have two more modes which are not occupied. But this then uh, would uh, result in the state uh, which would uh, be not normalizable. This redu reduced state would be not normalizable. So we go into the second problem I mentioned before. But we could uh, propose different extension of this state. So for example, we can take uh, ad those additional two modes uh, to be uh, coherent states. So now it somehow resemb resembles uh, like homodyning on the uh, on those modes, uh, but not exactly. Uh, another uh, possibility would be uh, to, for example, take a second copy of this state, uh, uh, and uh, and uh, so when we choose such, such an extension. Uh, then this, uh, our reduced state is again well normalized, and so we can do some consideration based on this. Um, we also choose this state because it, for example, could be uh, used for uh, device independent uh, key quantum key distribution, which I uh, considered in this another preprint, if someone is interested. Uh, but uh, uh, this extension pretty much uh, executes this uh, uh, setup where, where we beam split single photon and then perform some type of weak uh, homodyne measurements on two stations. <laughs> so, uh, because we have four modes, so we have two qubits, uh, uh, we have a perfect criterion for entanglement because now we are having this. Uh, a two particle Hilbert uh, space structure, we have can apply any tool which are uh, could be considered for uh, two qubit states. And uh, for the uh, for, uh, two qubits, we have uh, P the PPT criterion, which is sufficient and necessary. So if uh, we do not uh, see entanglement using this criterion, um, to our reduced state, then our description will uh, not tell anything about the fact. So it turns out that uh, uh, let's consider uh, this situation that we have like transmission line that is uh, coupled to the envi thermal environment uh, that uh, uh, that adds noise to our uh, state, uh, and the coherent states are local, so they are not. Uh, and uh, let's leave them uh, without change. Uh, so we can, for the thermal environment, uh, uh, find the, uh, the evolution equation without uh, many problems. And what we would see here is the uh, average number of uh, uh, photons in, in the uh, in the thermal state. Uh, or, uh, the Gibbs state, uh, uh, and then uh, what we see. Of course, in the, uh, we find that, of course, we have uh, applied the criteria, so we make a partial transposition of, on our state, and we look if there are negative eigenvalues, and yes, there is a negative eigenvalue, and when, the, uh, when we have 
no uh, decoherence, then nothing changes. Uh, but uh, if we add uh, uh, some decoherence process, of course, uh, entanglement will uh, start uh, to vanish. But uh, uh, interestingly, it's uh, uh, when we have only low temperature damping, it turns out that this state is entangled uh, for any time of uh, evolution. So uh, that's quite surprising that uh, when, of course, uh, so uh, that's surprising. It's very robust against that kind of uh, evolution. And to consider another uh, uh, state, it's, you know, which was the bright squeeze vacuum uh, state in four modes. This is the state that uh, we obtain through uh, pumping nonlinear crystal and then harvesting uh, uh, photons in the cross sections of the two cones. Uh, if there are, of course, if, if those are polarization. Uh, uh, and so this is uh, a very commonly used source of singlet states, uh, approximately singlet states, because we see it's not a singlet state. Uh, and so we could ask, okay, during the transmission, uh, after what time we lose the entanglement, uh, we do not see entanglement anymore in our description. And so uh, here we have this critical time at which we uh, uh, stop to see the entanglement. And here is the average uh, photon number. Uh, from uh, from coming from environment uh, in the lens, and so uh, we can this parameter gamma uh, tells us how strongly we pump the crystal, so it determines the average number of photons in the state, and we see that uh, with growing uh, uh, gamma. So when we go to macroscopic uh, macroscopic uh, occupation of the modes. Uh, then the time uh, of the uh, of this critical time increases. That, uh, but uh, uh, but we see also that uh, uh, again for uh, when the we have uh, low temperature buff, then uh, this critical time. Uh, High increases, and so when we have low temperature uh, environment, then uh, there is uh, this kind of entanglement is uh, robust against such a condition. Okay, uh, so uh, we see that we can, uh, for example, uh, specify some macroscopic properties of the sources in our setup. Then we can allow them to evolve and to uh, make a different. Uh, uh, we can make a different operation on them. Uh, and based on this, we can see if there is still entanglement or not in the system. And uh, But uh, this uh, description doesn't tell us only about entanglement. We can find another quantum uh, features in this description. And for, for to, uh, to explore this, uh, we uh, infer uh, Consider this generalization of the Mandel Q parameter. So if uh, we have i i, so we consider only one mode. This simple the Mandel Q parameter, and when it's uh, less than zero, then we know uh, that our state is non-classical. It has subpoissonian statistics. However, if in, in this generalization, if we have two modes, and when it's less than zero, then the state is entangled. So uh, what can uh, and uh, uh, so we can consider both uh, uh, so statistics and entanglement using this parameter, uh, and of course it can be easily found in our reduced description. And so uh, to present some simple calculation on that, we can consider. Uh, that we have state that is uh, some some state of single mode and its product state with a zero uh, occupied state in the second mode and we then beam split the uh, this state uh, so uh, what we get 
we can consider that beam splitting, the beam splitting transformation of modes, and we can easily find, reduce this uh, unitary transformation of modes to this operator on uh, unitary operator on our reduced space. And then we can transform our uh, reduced states using this operator in a very intuitive way. And uh, uh, applying this transformation for the state, we find that um, uh, the, having the uh, Mandel uh, Q parameter in the input state of the mo this mo occupied mode, uh, it is equal to the sum of this uh, uh, generalized the parameter, which tells about the entanglement, and it's exactly equal. So it demonstrates like how the sub, uh, this entanglement by beam splitting is inherited from the sub statistics of the input uh, state. Uh, so <laughs> in summary, uh, we have uh, proposed uh, the extension of this reduced uh, state of the field description in which we map the problem of entanglement of multimode boson field into entanglement of two particles like state. Uh, and uh, uh, it is still equipped with the uh, whole first quantization like structure, uh, which allows us to consider uh, many tools already available uh, in uh, first quantization. Uh, and the extended reduced state of the field is not limited to the description of entanglement. We could also try to look for another phenomenon. And this is not the, uh, I'm not saying that what I showed is all that it's possible to do with this state. May, uh, and maybe some outlook. Uh, so uh, one could think about categorize, categorization of states based on the mesoscopic uh, properties uh, that are uh, used in our description, or for example, to consider different uh, quantum phenomena like this uh, hidden polarization, so polarization in higher orders. Uh, one uh, quick comment also, uh, uh, we could also extend the description to, uh, uh, to for example, tensor product of three uh, single particle like states and so and so on. Uh, and also consider entanglement in such, uh, in tripartite scenarios in this way, for example. So thank you for your attention. And I uh, also would like, uh, would like to thank you all that you uh, make possible to uh, tell you about this, my research to you. So thank you very much. Thank you much, Carla, for a very nice talk. Now <laughs> we open the discussion. Since there were quite a lot of questions from the audience, I suggest that now we start with the online uh, online audience. If anyone from our uh, online auditorium has any question. Professor Tuski has a question. Had a question. But right now, is he there? Yeah, Okay, so do you want to add a question or? Well, okay, it doesn't seem to be the case. So uh, are there any questions from, from the room? Okay. So, okay. Oh, I, I have a very simple question because I, I don't understand all this. Uh, uh, you reduce the situation of many photons to actually two photons. Is it important how many photons you had at the beginning? No, it's, it doesn't matter. matter. Yes, it's a universal for any state of the field. You, uh, the, the thing is, it's single particle like. We call it single particle like because it doesn't really tell us how many particles there are in the original system. So we try to distinguish that it works for any number of particles, and those particles which we describe they are only mathematical.
mathematically speaking, like particle objects, but they are not real particles. Only the level of entanglement should be similar in all of them in order to be well represented by two entangled particles, right? Or wrong? Um, it's, um, I think I not, do not understand the question. It's like, uh, of course, uh, when we, uh, it's good if all the particles in the state are, for example, correlated pairs, then it's, uh, the description will work very well then. Uh, in other, other cases, they, it should also uh, show uh, entanglement for some states. Uh, it's something that one should look into if uh, what states are impossible to detect with such methods. Entanglement of the states, sorry. It's, uh, okay. So well, I have a general question. So, like, so you have studied two uh, PPD systems, let's say, but have you tried to go beyond that and see whether whether you can get something interesting there? Uh, because if you have PPD systems, I mean, you have partial transposition, you know whether the state is entangled or not. What happens if you go beyond? Yes, uh, uh, I wanted to go this in in future to this. Uh, now I just propose the formalism and try to see uh, that it can work and what tools I have available. Uh, and so that's an interesting thing to go and really look into more complicated systems. And those were rather proof of principle then. Uh, and of course, it's interesting to look into such cases. And of course, uh, we don't have to use uh, PPT criterion. It's uh, we, uh, when we have uh, higher dimensional particles, we can use another uh, uh, criterions which are uh, proper for the situation of uh, higher dimensional qubits. Any other questions? One more? Okay. So imagine that now we have like infinite amount of modes, number of modes. Yes. So can you uh, be able, is it possible to somehow formulate a separability criteria for this case in terms of projections on finite dimensional world spaces? If you have, um, yes, I think so, because uh, you can just, if you have an uh, infinite number of modes, you can just trace part of those modes, trace out, and uh, consider only uh, some finite number of them. Simply omitting some in the description, when you omit one of them, some of the modes, you just effectively trace them out. Yeah, sure, but then you might lose entanglement, right? I mean, you can lose entanglement. So That's the cost. And also, you could may, may not be able to consider that. Uh, you can you have to consider the uh, that those extra modes that you uh, removed uh, could act now as an, some kind of environment and uh, uh, for the evolution you have to somehow in, try to include them back. Yes, but the question is whether it's possible to formulate if and only if criteria. If, if and only if here is also not. If and only if it's uh, it's a sufficient criterion because uh, you could have uh, entanglement in some uh, higher order correlations which we neglected because we found okay those are the uh, more relevant degrees of freedom those correlations and we abandon different correlations which describe the whole yeah, state. Yeah, but then it means that there is another projection where you have the same. Yes, you of course you can. <laughs> the discussion that you remove it to later, unless yes. you have some quick. I have a question. question. So you mentioned a couple of times that sometimes your states end up not normalizable. I guess they're traceless or something. Yes, yes, they are traceless. Yeah. So what does that mean for the field? Does, does this mean anything interesting for the personic field you start with? How like uh, physically meaningful that you end up? Is that it's uh, it means that it's a either a vacuum. It, or it's very specific uh, uh, correlated state. So it's either states in one of the uh, either particles in one uh, 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 subsystem or particles in another subsystem. Okay. Uh, I did not look more into interpretation yeah. <laughs> into the, rather than having like this general state. But, yeah. uh, 
have it. This is not normal. Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay, more questions? So I have a last, probably quick one. Uh, so why is it not normalizable? This, uh, uh, this uh, because uh, on the diagonal, on the diagonal, uh, we have uh, expectation values of uh, uh, total number operators in the uh, all combination of modes between subsystems. And then uh, if uh, we apply uh, 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 this operator to this state, so the first one will give some average of, uh, uh, given by this. Uh, OK, it, a part of the subsystem A has some particles, so it, it will not, uh, a photon number operator will not trivially work act on this subspace. But uh, the another one which will act on the set and uh, a subsystem uh, will always give zero. Okay, so you just generate zeros on the set. Yeah, see, it's always okay. generates okay. zeros. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Online audience? Not really. Okay, so let's thank the speaker again.